have been some shocks here at the US Olympic team trials for track and field but she is the overwhelming favorite the water jump make sure that it's at the right level and that's coming up but right here right now as we welcome back in Olympian Cara Goucher I know you're excited about these next three races Cara coming up we see two gentlemen on track two teammates who really turned it on in the 10,000 meter final it's Woody Kincaid on the left and young Grant Fisher this is how they finished the 10k and they finished it in blistering pace yeah, it was such an exciting race to watch. You know, Grant Fisher only in his second 10,000 meters of his life. And Woody Kincaid, he has a blistering kick. His last 200 was 25 seconds that night. You know, you can't leave it up to the kick when he's in the race. But it was such an incredible moment for both of them. They're both first-time Olympians. They train together. They're excited to come through here. They've both said that if they qualify in the 5,000, they will run both events in Tokyo. That was Joe Klecker following them home, who also qualified. Do you know on that run home, you said blistering pace on that final 200. Do you know Woody Kincaid, as he acknowledges the crowd, hit 18 miles an hour in that home stretch? That's at the end of a 10,000-meter final. It's really incredible. incredible. Stand up. Hey guys, back it up. Green card, please. Yeah, I just stay nice and still. Hold your marks. First heat of the men's 5,000 meters. The top five in each heat and then the next six fastest go to the final so the olympic standard qualifying time is 13 minutes 13 seconds 0 0.50 see the full field we'll walk you through each of the athletes over the course of this 5,000 meters you know woody kincaid was asked about racing his teammate grant fisher the 24 year old from michigan he said you know what I really wish I didn't like him as much as I do. I really wish that we weren't as good friends as we are because it makes it harder because we always race each other. Yeah, they are a tight-knit group, the Bowerman Track Club, training together, and they all train hard across a lot of different events. We see hip number 10, Cooper Tier, who is a University of Oregon. I think he just graduated. He just won the NCAA championship in the 5,000, which was a dream come true for him. He said he's had such a decorated year at Oregon and career at Oregon. He was the indoor he ran super fast indoors as well, and so it was really great for him to cap off his senior year winning that 5,000 meters here at home. Well, all throughout Cooper Tier's younger years, he had a thing that he liked to do, and it was appropriate for an Oregon duck <laughs> at various stages throughout his younger life. He would dress up as Steve Prefontaine. It, it's just so perfect. This is Cooper Tier for Halloween at age 13. His idol, Steve Prefontaine, he comes to the University of Oregon and dominates in the event that Prefontaine ran. So what a story for him. And, you know, he has a legitimate chance to make this team. He needs to be calm and get through the rounds and save his energy for later, but he's definitely one to watch. Gareth Heath goes to the front, that bright yellow top, and then Lawi Lalang in second. You know, Garrett Heath grew up in Minnesota and was an excellent cross-country skier. You know, I knew him back in the day as a state champion in skiing, but he has really molded himself a great running career. He's a veteran of the sport at this point. He started in the 1500 and he's worked his way up into the 5000 and he always is in the hunt when it matters. So even though there's been a good break as far as days, Cara, days off, for the likes of Grant Fisher and Eric Jenkins. Eric actually, unfortunately, didn't finish the 10K, but Woody Kincaid, guys who did the 10,000 meter, how are their legs with, with these days off? Are they ready to go? Do you think they're reasonably fresh? You know, they're happy to have this prelim. I always liked the prelim after the 10,000. It was a chance to shake out the legs, to recenter yourself mentally, to get back into the moment, and it's just a chance to shake out that 10K one more time before you hit that final. With 10 laps to go in this first heat of the men's 5,000, we are going to give you an update on field with Paul Swangard. What's happening? We're in the second round, Lee, of the women's shot put final. This is the current leader after round one, Jessica Ramsey, who's an All-American at Western Kentucky. We talked a lot this week, Lee, about athletes being at their best at the right time. She came in round one and threw a new lifetime best. Here she is in round two. And 
another big one past that 59 foot sector line. First effort was 63, nine and three quarters. And this one just a bit underneath that 62 six. But we look at it again, they just get all that speed in the ring. This the ring, of course, where Ryan Krauser set the world record last Friday night. And so Ramsey with the lead as throws continue in round two. Lee? Still looked like she uh, wasn't totally happy with that and something to address. We'll get back to that. Thanks for the update, Paul. So still Gareth Heath pacing this field over Lowy the Lang, Grant Fisher, Woody Kincaid, Eric Jenkins all in blue. Eric has come up into the mix now in the top five. You know, Eric had a heartbreaking finish at the trials for Rio. He was fourth place in the 5,000 meters. You know, he had run that Olympic standard in the 10,000 and was feeling good heading into the race, but just didn't have it. He said he just felt so tired. He just felt dead. He decided to drop out, rest up, and get himself ready for the heats of the 5,000. It's been a very good meet. It's been a very good trials for athletes from the Northeast. And Eric is from Portsmouth, New Hampshire. And... Uh, you know, Rachel Schneider, she made the team in the women's 5,000. Ellie Puria St. Pierre, who went to the University of New Hampshire. She, of course, won the 1,500. Uh, Massachusetts native Heather McLean was third in the 1,500. So it's been a very good trials for certain athletes from the northeast of the country. You know, we've seen a lot of collegiate athletes in a lot of these heats and multiple events across these trials. In this particular heat, we only have two. We have Cooper Tier and we have Eduardo Herrera from the University of Colorado. So this is more of a professionally based heat that we're watching right now run. For the first time in this race, Lawi Lalang, who became a, an American citizen four years ago now, part of the U.S. Army's world-class athlete program, the Kenyan-born athlete takes the lead with about eight and a half laps remaining here at Hayward Field. I'm going to take a quick break. You won't miss a thing. We're going to go non-stop. You'll see it box in box. Back in a moment. This year has been a road of challenges to overcome. But if it didn't happen, I probably wouldn't be as strong as I am right now. Mentally, physically. I was able to fall back in love with the sport. Lots of hurdles, squats, lots of drills, kettlebell, workouts. Every single day, day in and day out. It's a lot of hard work and is just as much mental as physical. Once your mind and body come together, you can be unstoppable. Everybody goes through adversity. Everybody goes through hardships. But what do you do about it? You guys are brothers. I guess sometimes you just grow up. Oh, Luckily, you get a second chance at childhood. Stop. This new formula can turn a grown-up back into a baby. Ah, I texting him. Ah. Whoa, the boss is back, baby. Yeah. Ah. Ah. We did it. I guess we did. I was talking about me and Precious. <laughs> oh, gross. The Boss Baby Family Business. Ready PG. In theaters and streaming on Peacock July 2nd. I am a season no one saw coming. Not that it's a bad thing. I'm ready. I am something none of you expected. And each surprise leads to one heck of a summer. Because this year, to make the playoffs, you better win or you're not in. And one thing is for sure this season, I am not certain what happens next. And neither are you. I am NASCAR. Hey, everyone's got a screen in their hands, but not everyone's watching us. So they're missing David Wagner serving up fire, Stone Cold Katie Holloway, and record smasher Sam Grew. Love watching cake rise? Watch Stutzman hit the cherry on top. Boom. After you share that speed run, share me run. Share the high-speed collisions and long-distance nail biters. Let's make the Paralympics impossible to miss. And together, we'll show the world. 
Five laps to go in the first heat of the men's 5,000 metres. Lawi Lalang leads over Eric Jenkins. And then Gareth Heath. Gareth Heath. Uh, women's shot put final continues. Here's Maggie Ewan and Paul Swangard. Thanks, Lee. This is the conclusion of the second round of throws. Maggie Ewan who won NCAA titles in three different throwing events at Arizona State. Had to choose one, and she chose wisely. She's one of the best shot putters in the U.S. Look back at the replay as we await this mark. They're going to pair the group down to eight finalists after the third round. She now moves up one spot in the standings up into that number three position. That's where you want to be at the end as we'll now move to round three. Good stuff. It's been compelling viewing. As we get back to what's happening in this first of two heats of the men's 5,000, Eric Jenkins very well placed in second right on the hip of Lawi Lalang. Yeah, you know, this pace is pretty comfortable for all of them. I think they're all waiting. They don't want to have to run very hard. They just want to have, like, a couple quick laps at the end. So that's why we see everyone is still together. Not a single man has been dropped yet. So right now, everyone has a shot to get through. I think we will see the pace start to ratchet down with a couple laps to go. But we see Roberto Herrera who's moving to the front. He wants to get and stay in that front and lead pack. But really, they're all running the same pace right now. Where do you want to be? You want to be in the top five, and then you go straight through to the final. You don't have to rely on time. So Herrera is up there with Jenkins and Lawi Lalang. Garrett Heath in his fourth Olympic trials in that bright yellow top on the inside. Hip number one, and then Tia. Cooper Tia is still in there. What do you make of Grant Fisher and Woody Kincaid's race so far? The Bowman track. Uh, teammates in the red and white. You know, I just think they're so confident in what they're able to do. They've shown they have great fitness, and I think Woody Kincaid and Grant Fisher and even Cooper Tier are happy to just sit back, wait till the racing begins, and once someone decides to make a move and push from the front, they will respond. But at this point, they're happy to just sit back and wait for as long as possible. Grant Fisher's got more room to breathe. Look at Woody Kincaid. He got sick of being boxed in. He's gone all the way back to last, second last, and here he comes now up the outside. He got sick of being boxed in on the rail and wanted some room to breathe. Now here comes the 10,000-meter winner. You know, they have three laps to go, so I would... I would wager that somewhere in the next lap or so someone is going to get tired of this of this pace someone's going to get nervous that there's so many people left and someone's going to start to ratchet this pace down a little bit Heath Kincaid in shot three is Herrera Jenkins is two five is Lawi Lalang who's been at the front of this pack for the majority of the race he really has. He's been doing the work. He's just been out there pulling everyone through, and everyone is just sitting behind him. They're happy to let him pull everyone through. It'll be interesting to see when, it, when the race gets going if he still has something left in the tank. Here's Jessica Ramsey. Although she leads the cop in women's shot, but she didn't look happy with her last throw, Paul. No, she didn't, so she gets the opportunity to still have the lead here. Try to get this last row in before the final two laps on the track. Ramsey's best 63 9 and 3 quarters leads this very deep competition. And that one, another one out there. She has been the only one to throw over that 19 meter mark. That is world class throwing. And yeah, doesn't look happy at it again. Let's go back and look at the replay. It was a release last time that she struggled with the ball a little bit away from her neck on release. Maybe that was what she was struggling with. 62 9 and a quarter. That's her second best throw of the day. She continues to lead as we move through round three. There's been some movement. There's been some movement at the front. Garrett Heath has got himself back up out in front over Eric Jenkins, Woody Kincaid, Grant Fisher, Daniel Herrera, and then Cooper Tia. Yeah, you know, Garrett, he started to look around and he was like, there are too many people here. So with about two laps to go, he went to the front and you can tell the pace has quickened up. As we know before, a lap ago, everyone was together and now we're starting to see a lot of separation, two separate packs. But as we head into this bell lap here, Grant Fisher is getting antsy to get going. He wants to like dust off the rust from that 10,000. Fisher has a glance up at the big screen, one to go. You need to be in the top five and there's six runners vying for five spots here to go through straight through to the final now the pace picks up here comes jenkins goes around heat herrera's not done with yet and cooper's here the oregon duck around the outside all in black you know they are flying now that last lap was a 60 flat and so they are just 
ratcheting it up. Cooper Tier looks like he's getting tripped up a little bit, but this is going to be fun. There are six people here for five auto spots, and they all have great finishes. It seems like Garrett Heath might get left behind a little bit here. Eric Jenkins was denied a spot on the Rio team narrowly. He doesn't want to miss out there. Fisher's looking around. Tears looking around. Kincaid's looking around. And Garrett Heath has rallied. He goes past Daniel Herrera. Heath is going to go through. Eric Jenkins will win this first heat. He goes through to the final. So too do the two who finished first and second in the 10K. The teammates, Woody Kincaid, Grant Fisher, Cooper Tier. What an effort from the 35-year-old Garrett Heath of Minnesota. Rallied in those closing 150 metres to get that fifth and final spot, transferring to the final. Well, that was experience right there. You know, he's such a veteran, and he really got that going. It was a 60 for the second to last lap and a 55 for the last lap. And it was really him that separated that front pack from everybody else. And he was able to pull on his experience to move into that fifth spot in that final 100 metres. Cooper though, almost ended up face first on the track. Watch this for a save as this young man here got tagged and got tripped. Look at this. Oh, good save. Yeah, he handled it well. He handled it like a pro. He just shook it off and went with it. And I have to say, Eric Jenkins looked really good here. You know, he dropped out of the 5,000 because he just wasn't feeling well. But here he looks really relaxed. His form is so controlled. And he's like, you know what? I live to survive another day. I'm going to come back and I'm going to be in that 5K final. What a finish. So Eric Jenkins, Woody Kincaid, Grant Fisher, Cooper Tia, and Garrett Heath are the five gentlemen that go through to the final of the men's 5,000. 13.43.18. So a little ways off Olympic qualifying, but those guys up the front don't need to worry about that just yet. They go through. You know what? He's pretty fit. It worked out. He's the kind of guy who just has that energy. People want to be around him. Second heat of the men's 5,000 meters away. It was a really spirited finish in the first heat. Those closing 300 meters. Let's see what heat two gives us here as we show you the full field. Hassan Mead in here. So too is Emmanuel Bohr. His brother Hillary finished second in his heat of the men's steeplechase. You'll see Hillary run. He was the 2019 US champion in the men's steeplechase. Hillary will run in the last event tomorrow in the final of the men's steeplechase. Yeah, you know, Emmanuel Bohr was in that 10,000 meters last week. He finished outside of the top three, but he has had a good season. You know, there was an American record attempt set up for Paul Chalimo indoors earlier this year, and Emmanuel Bohr actually stole, stole the show there and became the second fastest American in that event, winning in, I believe, 13.05. So he's been having a good year. We also see in this heat, as you mentioned, Hassan Mead, a Rio Olympian, wearing hip number five. He runs for the Oregon Track Club Elite right here in Eugene. But, you know, he has not raced this event since Doha 2019. So we kind of wonder what's going on with him, and we'll see what kind of form he's in tonight. Morgan Beatles come, uh, sets the pace at the moment out in front as the men's second heat in the men's 5000 uh gets some momentum it's time to check in with lewis johnson lewis what you got well let's talk about the heat uh, which really continues to be a factor here lee current temperature is about 82 degrees at 8 32 p.m here and we're only expecting it to get much warmer over the next three days listen to this friday's expected high is 94 saturday 102 and then on sunday 112 degrees so the finals for the men's 5K was originally scheduled for Sunday at 4.30 p.m. in that crazy heat. So they've now moved it. Uh, we're expecting conditions to be much better at 10 a.m. on Sunday morning. So this 5K final at 10 a.m. on Sunday morning will be much cooler and much better, probably much safer for these athletes. Lee? Yeah, it just had to be done just uh, under the umbrella of safety. You've run in hot conditions. You've succeeded in hot conditions, but that's pretty wild, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, when it, that's just not safe for the athletes. And when, they're, when their health is in danger, it's definitely not worth it. One athlete I'd love to point out in this heat is wearing hip number six. He's in the yellow in the back running for Northern Arizona University. That's Nico Young, who 
in 2019 into 2020 was setting all of these high school records, the 3,000, and he was going to be going for the two-mile record, and of course the world shut down. So he had to turn his attention to training and get ready for collegiate racing. He's had a pretty good year, and he's excited to be here and see what he can do against the best in the U.S. Keep an eye out for hip number nine. That's Robert Brandt, the 24-year-old from Pasadena, California. There he is all in blue there. Robert really featured uh, in the 10,000 meters. He was up the front for a, a good period. Uh, he really forced the pace. It didn't quite work out for him in the end. He, he finished outside the top 10 as it got towards the end of the race. But he was one of the feature runners. It was a very spirited effort. As we go back to Shockport, here's Maggie Ewan, Paul. Yeah, we've now down to eight women for the final three rounds of throwing and up into the back half of the order here. Another good effort by Ewan, but right now she is outside of the top three by one and a quarter inches. Currently in third is Ohio State's Adelaide Aquila. Noted about her is she is coached by... Ashley Kovacs, the wife of Joe Kovacs, she also coaches her husband, who made the team last Friday night. She is having a great series so far, currently in that third position, trying to make her first Olympic team. Thanks for that. Who will be going to Tokyo. That question will be answered tonight. And not only is it the women's a shot put that's a final happening right now, after this event, we move to women's 3,000 meter steeplechase final. Mance leads the way. Connor Mance sets the pace over Paul Chalimo. And as opposed to the first heat, this heat is a little bit more strung out. People aren't running on top of each other as much. And I just want to also point out, hip number seven is Ryan Hill. And Ryan Hill was a world indoor silver medalist at 3,000 meters in 2016. He has struggled with quite a bit of injuries the last few years, but he certainly is one of the better 5,000 meter runners America has had. Eight to go from this point. Thomas Ratcliffe in a nice position there. You see him in the North Carolina colors, running fourth. And they just picked it up a little bit on that last lap. That was their fastest lap by far. So it seems like they're trying to string it out here and maybe keep an eye on the clock. That way they know if they don't finish in the top five, they can always nab one of those time spots. Top five is where Connor Mance, the leader at the moment, finished in last Friday night's 10,000 meter final here at the trials. Not too far away from being in that all-important top three. So seven and a half to go here in the second heat of the men's 5,000. Back in a moment. I've always thrived off of fear. In gymnastics, there's no limits. Having to come back, you have to bring a whole new level. Can I do it again? I am the fire. Simone versus herself. Discover videos for you on Facebook Watch. Tonight, I'll be eating a falafel wrap with sweet potato fries. Thanks. Splitsies? <gasps> Oh, you meant the food, didn't you? Bun, mayo, chicken, pickle, bun. Bun, pickle, Blast mayo, oh, Ooh, it's naked. The Naked Chicken Chalupa, only at Taco Bell. Let's just sit on the dock. Oh, no! Showtime, baby. It's not just experience on deck, it's attitude. Happy times! <laughs> I'm stressed. He should have come to me that he was hurt. Red on deck. Oh, my God. Hot day at the office. Bravo's Below Deck Mediterranean premieres Monday night at 9, only on Bravo. And stream every episode a week early on Peacock. To all the women that came before me on the U.S. Women's National Team, I can't thank you enough for everything that you have done for me and my teammates. You allowed me to dream. You allowed me the possibility to represent this amazing country. You fought for everything that you believed in to allow young girls to be inspired and to be motivated. 
but also to be better people and stand for something. To be in this moment with this team, it is the greatest feeling. Thank you. Dominic Toretto, you coming? Queenie, my brother's about to hurt a lot of people. You're gonna have to stop him. Well, I'm not the only one with a family full of eccentrics. Get the heat break for me, would you, darling? So much for granny shifting. <laughs> Ready PG-13, in theaters Friday. Hey, if you're feeling like a boss this summer, you're not alone. Alec Baldwin is back as the Boss Baby in DreamWorks Animation's The Boss Baby Family Business, which you can catch in theaters and streaming on Peacock starting Friday, July 2nd. Welcome back, Lee Diffie Karagoucha with you. Paul Swangard covering field events and Lewis Johnson chatting with the athletes. It's Morgan Beetlescombe who leads the way at the moment with five laps to go. Mentioned that Paul's handling field events. What's happening in the women's shop put final, Paul? Oh, Lee, we've got another good one here. A head-to-head -head matchup. We saw Raven Saunders set a new Olympic trials record, new lifetime best. And Jessica Ramsey was watching, and this was happened a moment ago. Let's go! And she sends that one sailing, and you see the reaction. 66 feet, one quarter of an inch. That's the longest throw by an American in five years. She now has the lead, closing in on the end of round five. What a competition. And you kind of get the feeling that that's going that way here in the second heat of the men's 5K as Paul Chalimo now takes over the front. Yeah, Paul Chalimo has just been hiding out in there. We haven't really even seen him. And now he moves up front. We see him. He's saying, hey, guys, I'm still here. I am the Rio Silver medalist. This has been interesting. We've seen the B BYU teammates really work this field. Now we see Klinger take over in the front. We see Nico Young has moved his way up. You know, he's only 18 years old. He really wants to be in that final in a few nights' time. Nico has been hanging out out the back. He's just been biding his time watching what the pack's been doing and now here comes the young man bright yellow top hip number six the 18 year old from camarillo california he had such an incredible high school career a lot of pressure heading into college and he's handled it well and it's it's fun to see him in this race now running home running a smart race and we see Bohr starting to move up here he realizes hey there's only three laps to go I need to make sure I'm in contention here when the moves start because I think we will like the previous heat I think we'll see some moves here in the next 400 meters or so people trying to distance themselves and break the top five away from everybody else top five is where you want to be if you want to advance straight to the final here's Hassan Mead all in green there running in fifth just ahead of Brandt you know, we don't know much about Hassan Mead in the 5,000. He hasn't run one in two years, but so far he's looking good. He's hanging in there, and he's been in great position the whole time to cover moves and be ready when they all start. Now Paul Chalimo just eases by Casey Klinger to take the lead. Emmanuel Bohr is going with him, and here comes Hassan Mead. And all of a sudden, Connor Mance in that light blue BYU outfit and white right there, who was at the back a moment ago, this cross-country specialist starts to force his way forward now up into the top three. Yeah, you know, we're seeing a lot of Mance's strength in this meet, aren't we? You know, he's the, he's the NCAA cross-country champion. He was fifth just a few nights ago in the 10,000. And here he is coming back again in the first heat of the 5,000. And he is determined to make that final. He controlled a lot at the beginning of the race. He fell back a little bit. But now he knows this is where it's getting real. There's only two laps to go. He has to stay with them and put himself in position as the pace starts to tick down. About 600 meters to go. Paul Chilimo. Emmanuel Bohr. Connor Mance now. Hassan Mead all in green there trying to go with them. Has Mance gone too early? 
You know, it's a great question. We're going to find out over the next 600 meters, but he's definitely pushing it. He knows that a lot of these guys have really good kicks, and he doesn't want to leave it up to that. He doesn't want to get out lean by one spot. Look at Paul Chalima looking around. He's so calm, cool, and collected. We all know he is going to have a great finish if he needs one. So I think Mance is trying to get up in there and keep it honest and keep on their shoulder. He doesn't want to leave it up to the last 50 meters if he doesn't have to. But this is still a really big group of men here as we head now towards the bell lap. Here we go. One more to go. Paul Chalimo, the Rio Olympic 5,000 meter silver medalist, leads the way over Emmanuel Bohr. You know, they picked it up on that last lap, but they aren't flying like they were in the last lap. So I'm expecting we're going to see some moves here. I mean, there's only 300 meters to go, and there's so many men still in contention. Morgan Beatles come with hip number two there in the black and white. He searched for it. Connor Mads. Now here comes Nico Young, all in yellow. The teenager. He's trying to force the issue. Brad's trying to go with him. Bohr and Chalimo. Chalimo's checking out who is where. That's how casually and easily he's doing it. Oh, yeah. Chalimo, this is his event, and he looks great. And they've trained together, Bohr and Chalimo, so they're controlling this race at this point. How about Thomas Ratcliffe? Ratcliffe's trying to race Brandt for that top five position. Paul Chalimo, Manuel Bohr, Hassan Mead, Nico Young. Brandt's on the inside there. He reaches out. He'll make it. He'll get that top five. 13-36-66. Paul Chalimo, he needs to another Paul, Paul Swangard.